We have Brian Massiter <laughs> from Backflip Studios, the game director there. Little game called Dragon Veil. Some of you may have played out there. Come on in, come on in. I'm gonna sit way over here. You sit down where you're comfortable. Sit down. Okay. Yeah, I'm sitting right here. Oh. All right. Hey, Gordon. Hey, Brian, how are you? <laughs> well. <laughs> Welcome to Games Beat Online. Thank you. So I know that the, uh, the first thing uh, people always ask in the room is like, so what's this one, what's this talk about? We're gonna talk about games. Excellent. Okay. And at, at Games Beat? At Games Beat. We're going to talk, about, talk games. about games for about the next 20 minutes. Okay. Um, I like talk it. Talk about what we love, talk about where things are headed, not only for Dragon Veil, but where we think things are headed in general for games. Right. Maybe field a few questions out here if people want to talk shop. Yeah, I'm terrified of the questions. Oh, I know. I am so, not terrified. So <laughs> generally, when I, if, if, I, if I give a talk, uh, one of my engineers is in the room, yes. uh, uh, Chris Goody. Uh, hi, Chris. If you're uh, uh, out there. I called him Chris. I never call him Chris. I call him Goody. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, generally, he's there as my safety blanket. So I'm, gotcha. I'm, but I'm terrified of his questions. I will be, you will be Linus, I will be Blanket. It's going to be fine. <laughs> All right. So first no, I, just need you to, I just need you to edit his questions and make sure they're clean. Okay. So tell me, <laughs> tell me a little bit about your gaming background. So I obviously the game director, Backup Studios. Yes, one of. Is, but one of. Well, so yes. for people who don't know at home. Right. So uh, game director, I, background was production. I was a producer. Uh, so I was a producer for a long time. And game director kind of works hand in hand with a, a producer where um, I guess the best way to say it is a producer makes sure that the trains makes sh makes sure that the trains run on time. Yep. Uh, the game director kind of makes sure we're headed in the right direction. Got it. Right. That's that's a really vague way to say that. And what is your origin story? Your gaming origin story? You don't you didn't just jump into to Dragon Veil and be like. I did not Ooh. just ju uh, from a player's standpoint or, or uh, work from or? a game from a work. Let's do we'll do work first, and then we'll talk about games we love in a second. Okay. <laughs> uh, originally, I. It's funny, I had a, I had a QA job, yep. uh, and I was working uh, full-time, and I decided to quit my QA job to go back to school to get a job in games. Nice. Um, kind of a roundabout way. I'm with you. Yeah, um, but then, um, yeah, I got a, a, a degree in computer science, and then promptly decided not to use it, uh, and moved into <laughs> mobile doing WAP development, actually, so remember old WAP sites? Yeah. WAP, right? Yeah, of course. Uh, um, <laughs> so we did WAP sites, uh, I did... Um, mobile production at that point, so we were just kind of a content, mobile uh, a content provider, kind of a middleman, yeah. moved into production, and then really wanted to get into games. Yeah. Um, so left there, did some contract work, did some, some contract stuff, I did Bop It for EA. Okay, uh, and I then, also started EA, so just to mirror you, I was a school QA, Okay. back to school, <laughs> I studied water treatment, hydrology, engineering, whatever, but I wanted to make games. First time I went to school, in. I started aeronautical engineering. Nice. And then, yeah, and then uh, realized I'm probably not smart enough, so... Uh, <laughs> so it's okay, and here we are. We yeah, made it this far. It's true. I'm not a rocket scientist, yes. but I do make games. Yes. I'm not a water treater. Uh, well, good. Yes. A hydrologist. Hydro but <laughs> hydrologist. <laughs> so, so you made it... Okay, Bob at EA, so you're at EA. Where were you? Were you at EA West? We, we, were, oh. we were subcontracted. Okay. So I was, uh, I was actually work, I was a producer at, for a distributed team. Got it. So I was working out of my house. So ahead of your time, distributed teams yeah. nowadays <laughs> is a craft. Yeah, you know, but I, I will say that I, I didn't love it okay. um, because uh, I don't love working uh, from home because I am the smartest person in the room. Sure. But I'm also the dumbest person in the room. Uh, and and I, I really thrive in an environment where you can kind of uh, bandy about ideas and, and that kind of stuff. So I really wanted to go work. I wanted to work at a studio. So how did you find your way? Was, was back with the first studio? Or where were you, did you, how did yeah, you find so your way? Riptide and Leviathan and doing some, some, some contract work. And then uh, eventually uh, Brian Robbins was like, hey, I need to, you know, right. Ah, of course, yes. Brian Robinson. Uh, so, so he was like, "Hey, I need, to, home. <laughs> I, I need, I need to scale down a little bit. I need yes. to scale back." And we had two producers, and he's like, "I kind of only need one." And uh, so he was like, "Hey, but I want you to meet Julian, uh, who's the CEO <laughs> of Backflip. They're they're scaling up, and they're thinking about hiring a producer. They'd never had one. Sure. Um, and at the time, Backflip was 14 people, yep. and they were starting to do multiple projects and starting to." I think just seeing some things slip through the cracks, and they were like, hey, we should have somebody who makes that not happen. So nice. went in, and then, yeah, that was, uh, I got hired as project manager, then producer, and now game director. So the original cast, essentially, of Backflip Studios. Nah, I, how many, how like, many like season three oh, of, of SNL. I wouldn't I call it season one. I'd say like season three, 
But yeah. I'm the same way. So, so I'm just going to mirror you all day. So like when I worked on Madden, right? But it was uh. like 95, 96. And it's people go, oh, do you make Madden? It's like, well, I worked on Madden. But sort of like working on Rocky Three, Like it was there before. It's gone on to do other things. Yes. But, you know. Oh, terrible example though. Rocky Three is clearly the worst of the bunch. What? It's the worst one. Clever Lang. It's the worst Running one. on the beach. Mystic. Humility? No? Oh my, terrible. okay. That's terrible. <laughs> we will get to that within this 15 that's a, minutes. That's, we will a, resolve, that's a different we'll fireside chat. Yeah, Rocky, oh the God, fire? Rocky three. Okay. Yeah. Back to games for a second yes. because you have derailed me with that. With that Sorry. Asked me. Um, so tell people a little bit about Backflip today. So probably more than 14 people and a little game called Dragon Veil and some others. Yes. What is it like now? Uh, so there's about 114 of us now. Uh, in the last uh, five years, we've, we've grown. Uh, we partnered with Hasbro about two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's, it's, we've done uh, Paper Toss and Nin Jump. Wait, you made Paper our, Toss? Yeah, those, that's the early, that's like the early uh, Ragdoll Blaster, Paper Everyone Toss, Everyone knows Paper, okay. Yeah. That's all important. Paper Toss. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> you know, it's the, it's, whenever I meet somebody and they're like, what do you do? And I'm like, I make mobile games. And they're like, oh, which ones? Yes. And I'll say Dragon Veil, and some people will know that. I'll say Nin Jump, and some people will know that. And then I say Paper Toss, and they're like... Is that the one with the orange trash can? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. That's, so, so that was that was uh, again. That's season one. That was before sure. I was there. Got it. Uh, and then, yeah. So, that's kind of what we're known for. Then we did uh, Ragdoll Blaster two and three. We've done Dwarven Den. We had uh, Spellfall. Uh, and then we've had a few games come out. But then Dragonville was kind of our big, um, kind of the thing that propelled us. And that's actually something we were talking about yesterday. But you're actually enumerating it, right? Which is it takes a lot of games even for a, a top studio, to sure. find you know, that escape velocity game that just takes it to a, a whole nother level. I also think the industry changes so fast. Sure. I mean, you know, uh, early on, uh, I think uh, Julian and Dale, who are my uh, founders, and, and Tom, they were they're just visionary about kind of ad uh, revenue in mobile games. Yep. They were visionary. And then I, we did Army of Darkness Defense, okay. uh, uh, and we threw, well, we didn't throw, but we put IAPs in it, uh, okay. in-app purchases okay. in there, as kind of a test. Okay. And then and it was a premium game. Yeah. So we kind of committed the Cardinals, and <laughs> we charged you for the game and then had in-app purchases. And then we saw how much money we were making in the in-app purchases blew the premium price kind of out of the water. And so we made it free to play. Yeah. And we're like, hey, that whole in-app purchase thing is neat. Uh, we should give that a try. <laughs> right on. And then we made Dragonville. And then you made Dragonville. Yeah. And, and even though Dragonville, for those who, I mean, we were talking about yesterday, that game's evolved a lot too. Like inside Absolutely. of it, it's not, okay, paper toss, love it, mean it. I don't know how much it evolved, right? Dragon I mean, Mail ultimately, has evolved. Yeah, right, yeah, I think paper toss, at the end of the day, you're throwing something in a trash can, yes. right? We've tried to innovate a little bit there, but you're throwing something in a trash can. Okay. Uh, Dragon Veil has definitely evolved. Um, it's interesting, we, um, we had our fourth anniversary uh, recently. Congratulations. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, and and it was, it's crazy, first of all, to me that we're still relevant after four years in, in, a, in a mobile game, that's yeah. tough. Um, but what we did was we got the whole studio together and we showed version one. For everyone at home, Dragon Veil, iOS, Android. iOS, everywhere. Android, everywhere. Amazon. Amazon, okay. Everywhere, yeah, everywhere okay. mobile. Actually, everywhere not, mobile. A, not Windows phone, okay. sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's okay. It's, it's fine. Uh, we showed version one of the game side by side with version 3.3, which we just shipped. Yep. Um, and it was just really, it was really encouraging, I think, just, I mean, not just for me, but I think for the whole studio to see kind of how that thing changed and what a live team can do mm -hmm. and that you don't have to get everything perfectly right exactly the first time you can iterate and learn and, and make improvements. So now, do you just play mobile games or what do you play? Like what informs you as a gamer, you're a game director, <laughs> what, what matters to you? Right. Um, so I probably play a little, maybe a few more games than a 40-year-old man should. <laughs> but I play it's console a games. free zone. You yeah, I appreciate that, okay. yeah. Um, it is games beat. I think yeah. I'm allowed to say that I play Candy Crush Soda Saga. Right. I don't just play mobile games, though. Um, I've been playing a lot of FIFA, Big. a lot of Forza. Okay, we can get uh, that going. Are you PlayStation 4 or Xbox? Uh, yes. Oh, oh yeah, no, 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 no holy. When is all open? Wait, open challenge put out there. No holy war Cyber here. Cyber Cooper coming your way. Okay. Oh wait, okay. man, you Liverpool <gasps> over the internet. Oh yeah, sadness. I'm going to destroy you. I, um, okay. Um, Back to you. Yes. You play. Sorry. So yeah, so FIFA, Forza. Um, uh, I've just I was playing the um, Star Wars Battlefront. Beta. Oh, the beta. 
Like, really pretty. I have, I have the Imperial symbol tattooed on my left shoulder. Okay. I'm a bit of a Star Wars fan. Um, how, so how is it for you? So people, what I've heard, yeah. tell me your feelings, was that people expected a reskin of Battlefield, but it's not. It's something else. So I never played a ton of Battlefield. Okay. Um, I played a little bit. But for me, it was, it was kind of like nine-year-old Empire Strikes Back loving fan mind-blown <coughs> experience because it's beautiful. Yes. And it's you're very in the Star Wars universe. The sound is good. It's beautiful. It's a good shooter. I mean, it's the beta. It's limited. Um, but um, I, I don't work for them, but they guarantee to purchase for me through the beta, because, well, yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm like, I might upgrade to get, like, the special maps. So, wait, tell me, so, uh, we'll go into sort of the taxonomy of fun for you, so, what about it, like, what are the aesthetics that Battlefront brought to life for you that you're, like... I think it's one part nostalgia. Okay. Right? Uh, um, it's, I, I get to run around in the Star Wars universe. Sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I have, I would say, my wife gets a little irritated by this, but I would say, maybe once a week, I... I legitimately try to move something with my mind because I think I might have the force. Oh, no. Nice. I'm like, that is awesome. And she's like, it's never going to work. And then she'll hand it to me, and I'm like, or did it? Jedi mind trick. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> I used to do that too. I thought I was an X Men. I used to search my mutant ability. I try to like cool something off or, yeah, move right. with my mind. One of those things, yeah. Yeah. I got called a mutant in junior high a lot, but I didn't think I had abilities. Oh, um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so what was the question? Sorry, where The were question we? was... Taxonomy of what, fun. Taxonomy of fun, yeah, the taxonomy of fun. I, uh, I'm really enjoying... I, I think the shooting controls are nice. Yeah. Um, I like the... There's a partner... Uh, you you kind of get a partner assigned to you, and you can spawn on their position, and you can like wait to see if it's safe. Yeah. Um, but it gets you back into the fray faster, because I think one of the frustrating things with a lot of shooters is spawn points... Uh, and you're like, oh, look, I'm respawning, and then I'm going to run for 14 minutes to get back to the action, and I think they do a good job there. Got it. So now you play a lot of console. Do you play a lot of PCs? Like I know, so me, I'm a big uh, Final Fantasy XIV, Sargatanis sh- server if you're out there. Um, I love FIFA. So fun. I love FIFA. Um, I'm currently on loan from Liverpool. I was not good enough to, to manage Liverpool. They were like, they said, you, like go, you go down Standard leaves, like, get, get back to Belgium, go yeah, play. Now, um, so how does, do you play any PC? Do you play like, you're like a league or you're a Dota, any of that? You know, I played League and Dota. I, um, I, I, I like those games. I'm not invested enough to get good at them. Okay. Uh, and um, so, I, like, we have League Night at work sometimes. Okay. Uh, I played... No, we mean League of Legends. Or do League you mean of Rocket League? Because Rocket oh, League is... Okay, now Rocket League is amazing. I do, I, do, I do love me some Rocket League. Okay. Speaking of uh, Back to the Future, I think they just released a Back to the Future pack where you of can Rocket get the DeLorean. League. Yeah, you can get the DeLorean in Rocket League. So smart. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway... Um, yeah, I, play, I played Armello recently uh, yeah. on the PC that I really, really liked. I play a couple of PC games. I play Hearthstone in all of its forms. Yeah. I think that's just genius. I think it's a, a beautiful game. I love it. Um, and obviously super fun. Like, I think exceeded expectations. I mean, obviously Blizzard, phenomenal, but really still well, phenomenal and, think, and exceeded expectations. And I think the team that built it, and I could be totally lying here, uh, but I think the team that built it was like eight people to start. Okay. And that's just, it's so polished. Well, eight really good uh, correct. women and men, whoever you may be. <laughs> very, very smart. All people. eight of you. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I play, uh, this is going to sound uh, uh, maybe not ironic, but I play a lot of Dragonvale. I, I just should. It, it's not, no, but like, not just like a, oh, you need to eat your own dog food type thing. You got to play your own game. I, but I you actually genuinely play your own game. Correct. <laughs> but I'm saying I don't do it because I have to. Okay, got it. I'm actually enjoying it. Like, there's a, there's a Slack channel at work of like, hey, for the cooperative breeding cave, who's got this dragon in their cooperative breeding cave because we're trying to collect all the dragons? Like, yes, I could cheat. I know a guy. Wait, let's but we go try slower not for one second. So, most of the world has played Dragonville, but not everybody. What is the premise? Of Dragonvale? Uh, that's a good question. Are you a dragon? You are not a or dragon. Are you a veil of dragons? There's, there is a veil <laughs> okay. of dragons. It's floating yeah. islands in the sky. I know totally. B-A-L-E totally. people. Sorry. Correct. <laughs> um, and uh, so it is uh, islands in the sky. The premise is that you're kind of building a, 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 a dragon park. Yep. Uh, and you're trying to uh, collect kind of all the dragons. You're trying to discover what breeding combinations have. So you can put in a fire dragon and a plant dragon and get out a poison or a pepper oh. or a or flower. So there's a lot of discovery. Okay. So there's a lot of discovery and a lot of collectability. Got it, got it, got it. So how do you... F- okay, so it's so interesting because you are the game director, yet you are also in the universe yes. as a player. How do, you, how do you dissociate, might be the simplest question, of like 
like I'm the game, like I'm Lord British, but I'm also British. Like, you know what I mean? How do you, yep. how do you keep yourself and be like, well, I have to be the most, I have to have all the dragons. It's me. Well, I think it's really important for me to, um, uh, to understand, like when, I, when, when our players are like, hey, this breeding chance is ridiculously hard, and they get mad and they'll rage quit or they get really frustrated, I think it's important for me to feel that pain. Yes. To be like, this really is hard. Uh, and then try to, <laughs> or if there's things like higher level dragons give you a better chance to breed rare dragons, yeah. right? But not everybody knows that. So we put loading tips in, and it was one of those things where, I was, <laughs> for real, I was in a management meeting, and my boss was like, how the hell do I get this dragon? And I was like, oh, well, do you do this, that? And he's like, how am I supposed to know that? Yeah. And I'm like, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, I think it's important to feel the pain points so that you can know how to alleviate them, hopefully. Um, and then also, I think, just to get a really good sense of the feel. I play a lot of my competitors as well, mm -hmm. um, just to see what they're doing smart. What are they doing that's, what, that I didn't think of? And um, yeah, it's cool. As a game director, how much of your focus is on the the game experience of the people who are already in Dragon Vale mm -hmm. versus, I guess, what it takes to acquire more players or to return, you know, or that return a, players back into the that is a great Dragon question. Vale verse. In in I, in my office, uh, just to the left of my uh, craft beer calendar, yes. there is a, <laughs> there is a there is a, a, a they're a, in Colorado. It's true for, for context. There uh, there's a photo of kind of me at the center and then spokes off, like the development team, the user acquisition guy, the marketing folks, my players, my, com my competitors. And at some point throughout my week, every one of those spokes needs time. Yes. Every one of them. Absolutely. And so, and, and I think it's, there's a natural prioritization of sometimes different spokes get different, different amount of time. So I think I, that's a really bad way to answer. Uh, <laughs> I do them both. Yes hopefully by prioritized need. Oh, this is great, sorry, I'm looking in the, the conversation here. Correct. So just for clarity, it is Dragon Vale, not Dragonville. Correct, it is not Dragonville. It is V-A-L-E. V-A-L-E, okay, Dragon gotcha. Vale. Um, so wait, so there are Dragon Vale fans here in there. What is something, world premiere, is there anything that, that's the that upcoming event, upcoming thing, if they had a chance and they were on the internet with the game director of Dragon Vale, what can you tell them out there that might help them have a better Dragon Veil vale experience or an upcoming Dragon Veil vale experience? Oh, man. I was not ready for that question. Uh, I would no. say... Nice work. Okay. Uh, I, <laughs> I would say... Well, we've, got a new, we've got a new Halloween uh, event coming out okay. uh, very soon, uh, Thursday. Okay. Um, it's the return to uh, uh, Whitby's Candy Bash. Yeah. We made some stuff up. It's fine. Um, so we have a new event coming. Um, we've got some really cool new dragons. Oh, I know what I'm going to tell folks. Tell folks. Is, wait, wait, hold on a second. No. Three, two, <laughs> one. Okay. There's a, there's a dragon. Yes. Called the Lycan dragon. L-Y-C-A-N. Okay. We, had, we also have a Lycan dragon. L-I-C-H-E-N. Like permafrost. Yes. It's a bit of a play on words. Okay. But the Lycan dragon... During the full moon... Hold on, wait. During I'm, Halloween... Wait, wait. I'm liking this already. Yeah. <laughs> no, I go. <clears throat> Uh, is going to transform uh, during the full moon of the Halloween event. That is fantastic. World premiere. World premiere. World premiere. I've actually, my community manager is so pissed off at me right now. Because ah! I told him, I was like, you leave that out of everything. Don't tell anyone. I want it to be a surprise. And then I just told you, sorry. It's okay. It's okay. The world, you know what? <laughs> community, what other games are you looking forward to? What are you looking forward to this fall? So I, obviously your own game, but that's your own, that's your craft. Yes. What, that's being created, are you looking forward to? You know, to? I like, um, I, I'm excited to see what happens with uh, the new Guitar Hero and Rock Band. Okay. Um, just because I, those are such fun experiences, like group, uh, in a room experiences. I really love those gaming experiences. It's, it kind of brings me back to my roots. Um, uh, Wait, what are you? Are you singer, guitar, drummer? Bait? What is your... Um, I, I like to think I can do them all, okay. um, but I tend to end up the singer Got uh, just because I used to be the lead singer in an 80s cover band. Which was called? The Reaganomics. Okay, that's yeah. a lot. Okay. Yeah. So interesting thing about rock band uh, versus Guitar Hero for me. Mm -hmm. So in my feed, like on Facebook, right. I've seen a lot of rock band. Like it just feels like my Same. community is very like rock band, rock band, yep. harmonics. What up? Like, we're doing it. This is what's happening. However, and on TV, I've seen the Guitar Hero live commercial right. tons. 
and that just might be, be my watching hat. Maybe it's just ESPN. I don't know. But the, I see <laughs> a lot. The guy breaks the guitar and they do the Lenny Kravitz meme because yep. you're like, like the internet. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's just interesting to sort of, uh, I guess, how that results. I mean, I guess it's just good for, for gamers. Yeah, right? I, I'm excited to see those make a return. I'm not saying that I need like an entire room full of uh, plastic instruments again, but I'm excited or about it. You. Or do I? Uh, we do this thing every Thanksgiving. We call it Thanksgiving. And everybody kind of comes over. What? And Best do, house ever what? We do, so we do, we do like a big traditional meal for folks who don't travel home and don't have a place to go. So uh -huh. uh, I deep fry some turkeys and uh, try to do like a traditional meal and watch the Cowboys. And then uh, what we wait, do Wait, hold on a second. Wait, we'll stop here. Let's talk. Dallas Cowboys number one. Okay, back to you. Oh, no, we're far from it. Anyway, yeah. uh, and then what we do is we have kind of different screens. We have different consoles on different TVs, and Rock Band is always just a, a crowd favorite. Great. Well, that is very cool. Well, well Brian, our, our time's flown by. It has kind of flown by. Thank you so much for joining us for the first ever Games Beat Online. I really enjoyed it. I hope it. you'll choose to return someday. If they invite me back. Oh, if, if, if you were invited <laughs> back. <laughs> what do you mean, when you're invited back? Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, from everyone at home, it's uh, hashtag Games Beat. Hashtag And GameBeat. wait, if people, so to find your game, let's talk about Dragon Veil. You can find any mobile device, Amazon. Yep, Amazon, iTunes. Google Play, iTunes, go get Dragon Veil. Uh, and where's the community? Cool is there a website? Like, where do people, if they want to talk to people? You know, mostly it's Facebook, actually. We do, okay. We do, it's a lot of our community is very active on Facebook. And then there's also, there's a really, um, there's a wiki site that I think a lot of the community is involved in as well. Which is called? Wikia.dragonvale.com? Wikia.com slash Dragonvale, maybe? That sounds better. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Brian Mashinter, very much. I appreciate it. Cool. All right.